Hello. Good morning. And welcome back to Furnace Vale. We're still here. It's been three months this week. Three well, years. Although I could live here. I really could live here. A lot of people, especially over the last year or so, have decided to ditch the house and the stress and work and buy a canal boat, a narrow boat, a wide beam or a Dutch barge or a little GRP cruiser <laughs> and live a more peaceful life on the canals. <laughs> Yeah, it's not quite that simple, is it? No. We get a lot of questions on social media and YouTube and by email every week asking this, that and the other, all the details about what it's like to live on the canal or next to a railway line like this. <laughs> Train! <laughs> so today, we're going to try and answer as many of your most embarrassing and awkward questions you've got Oh my God! about living on a canal boat. First question is from Pete Rubbers. <laughs> real name. You can all right laughing, it's a real name. And he asks a very common question that we get asked as continuous cruisers, and that is how do you manage to see a doctor or a dentist or get a prescription when you're living as a continuous cruiser on a narrowboat? That's a good question. It is. That's a good first question. I'm glad I put that one first. It's actually really easy. We're still registered with the same GP we were when we were living in a house. And it doesn't matter where we are in the country, we can have a consultation either by video, like Skype or Zoom, or over the phone. And if we need a prescription, like for your rash... It don't look good on a video! Then uh, <laughs> he can digitally send the prescription to virtually any pharmacy in the UK. And we're always within a walk or a short bike ride of a pharmacy. And that can be done immediately, so we can have the consultation with the doctor and get the prescription within about an hour, can't we? Easy! Although, it is a bit more difficult if you need referring for something. Uh, before we lived on the boat, uh, I, was, I was an avid cyclist, I still am. And I was getting pains, you know, downstairs. So uh, they, they tested me, they did a scan uh, for testicular cancer, just to be sure. And I miss things like that, because the doctor was like, you know what I mean, and down the gunnels, and I'm... Got gunnels? My, got, my, <laughs> got my fingers through his hair, making him uncomfortable. <laughs> Next question comes from Matt Norman, and he wants to know, can you get takeaways delivered when you live on a narrowboat? Yes! Yes, from personal experience. Hmm, Although not a, real, not a really nice experience, were it? No, no, it was uh, We had, uh, let's say it was some chicken and it was fried from Kentucky. <laughs> um, that was delivered and it was about 25 minutes late and it was a bit, well, it was a lot cold. Yeah. And the portion wasn't particularly attractive or appetising, was it? Uh, which put us off a little bit, but we know other boaters that can do it and you don't have to be living next to a, a like a physical address. If you give the uh, people who are delivering a good enough idea of where you are, yeah. uh, they can generally find you. Yeah, because you're paying up front anyway. Mmm, kebab. Mmm, kebab. I want a kebab now. Next question is a bit delicate. Who is it? And it comes from a doctor. Doc really? Dr. Andy Hill. And he wants to know that, does the boat rock when we're engaging in certain activities? You mean running up and down the boat? Well, <laughs> I was thinking what he might have been talking about and that there is like one particular activity and I like to, when I'm doing it, I like to be going backwards and forwards quite fast, sucking as much up as <laughs> <laughs> The Hoover, I'm talking about hoovering. You go backwards and forwards. Oh, I got my hand up, chiller. Yeah. So when I'm hoovering, I'm kind of going backwards and forwards, sucking as much as I can. And, oh. and that tends to get the boat rocking sometimes, doesn't it? You cannot put that in. Can I not? No. When you're hoovering the mat, do you know what I mean? And you're kind of going from one side of the boat to the other, that can get it rocking. Uh, but it depends how much weight is in the boat as well. When the boat's kind of empty of diesel and water, we tend to rock a bit more, don't we? Yeah, we do, yes. Uh, generally, it's not too bad. It, you can get a little bit 
off balance if you're trying to do summer and somebody else is walking about the boat. Can't you? Yes, I can. Next question is from somebody called Easy Top Swiss. I don't know whether that's some 80s psychedelic pop band or cheese. <laughs> it's like, it could be Swiss cheese, can it? Mm, anyway, he cheese. wants to know, do narrowboats cruise at night? Uh, yes. No. <laughs> There's no specific rule saying you can't, but the Canal and River Trust don't encourage it because it can be dangerous. It's very dark, very dark on a night on most of the canals. No lighting at all. So unless you've got a really bright headlight, and navigation lights, you could be taking bridges and other boats and all sorts. You could, somebody could step out in front of your boat. <laughs> it has to be really icy, wouldn't it? It's not something we see a lot of, to be honest. And we've only ever cruised once during darkness and we didn't have a choice. We were trying to get off a flooded river. Yeah. Weren't we? Uh, the, the funniest thing I ever saw was, do you remember we were in Birmingham? and it was about half past midnight, we could oh, hear, yes. hear music coming in the background and this GRP cruiser passed us and there were this guy and this woman singing Islands in the Stream by Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers. Yeah. Is it Kenny Rogers or Ted Rogers? <laughs> <laughs> which one's which? It's Kenny. Kenny Rogers, who's Ted Rogers? Where do I know him from? He's a, he's a comedian in this, well, he was a comedian in this country. Game oh, show three, host. two, one, one, eight. Yeah. Three, two, three, two, I can't do it. Next question is from Scott Bowes. Although it's a popular question and we get hundreds of people an hour asking us <laughs> this. Which is, uh, how do you get your post? Telegraph post. No, <laughs> post that. Don't they toss the post in Scotland? Toss the post. The men in skirts and the toss. Caber. Caber, toss the caber. Uh, it's been a murder. A murder. Uh, yes, post. We don't get much posts, to be honest. Most things like bank statements, and uh, TV license and a lot of other stuff you can get digitally by email, which is what we do. But we still need an address to be registered with a bank and as credit cards, and of course driving license and passport need to be posted out. So we use a family address for that. Yes. Most other things like deliveries, so anything we buy from Amazon, there's Amazon lockers and there's collection points in shops and supermarkets and post offices. We never really more than five minutes away from somewhere where we can pick a parcel up from. Which is dangerous when you get on Amazon, isn't it? It's called click and collect. Next one, question, that is, is from Jeff Cowles. He wants to know what's the strangest thing you've ever seen floating in the canal? You naked. <laughs> Why is that strange? <laughs> it's not, oft not often you see that. It's not a nice thing to say, is oh, it? Oh, I'm only kidding. I think for me it was that we, we once, I once saw a duvet and it looked like there was a body in the duvet. Oh, yes, I remember. Do you remember that? And it wasn't, was it? No. I can't remember, was it? It was somebody's ocarina or something <laughs> like that. I don't know. Ocarina! Uh, the other strange thing we had was uh, the fish tank. <clears throat> Fish tank. How ironic is that? A fish tank full of water in the canal. It didn't have any guppies in it. Or <laughs> like that, no, no. Uh, and the other strange thing was that mask of that former US president. You do see quite a lot of things floating about. Sometimes it's best not to look too closely. <laughs> I hate it when I have to pronounce a name I'm not sure about. Do you remember like curly hair? Next question comes from Carly. I don't know how to pronounce this. It's H-E-Y-R-E. -E. It's like hair, hair, hair. If you say it in a really posh accent, it's like you're saying curly hair. <laughs> <laughs> Next question comes from Carly. <laughs> 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 oh, 
<laughs> Next question is from Curly Hair. <laughs> Carly Heyer. Yeah, Frosty Vandenberg. <laughs> well, this one's from Fred. I think it's Burl. Burl. B U H L. B U H L. Is that Burl. Bull? Bull or Burl. 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 Something like that. Uh, and he wants to know what's the one thing you miss most about living in a house? Going to work. <laughs> the one thing I miss is you going to work. <laughs> the biggest thing I miss is a bath. A nice, big long deep hot bath yeah. that's what I miss and my 23 second cuddle with my best mate yeah I miss that so come on what about you that's it I don't miss anything you don't miss anything no well, we're not going back to an house then are we <laughs> Next question comes from Eve Crow. I was very direct then, wasn't I? You were. This is from Eve Crow. She wants to know, does living in such a confined space bring your relationship closer together? Well, you're alive still, aren't you? <laughs> it brings us closer to killing each other sometime. I think that's the issue. If you've got any cracks in your relationship, yeah. living in such a confined space with each other all the time is gonna expose those cracks. It will, it? definitely. We've been together nearly 29 years, so we're kind of used to each other's foibles by now. You've got more foibles than I have. No, I have so not. So that nurse told me. <laughs> Still putting cream on them. <laughs> it can be frustrating sometimes when you want time on your own, because you don't want to ask, oh, I want to be alone, because that's rude, but sometimes you do need that little bit of time alone, which is why you go out for a walk or go watch a movie in the bedroom. Not that sort of movie. I never said. <laughs> <laughs> but it does have its challenges, like if Sean's in the galley and I'm hovering around, I get hissed at. Uh, whereas, whereas when I'm trying to edit a vlog, it's like, it's like trying to edit a vlog in the middle of Piccadilly Station. <laughs> Except there's no nice smell of Greg's. <laughs> Bridge! Next question is from Gloria. I'm not even going to try and pronounce your surname because I'll get it wrong and embarrass myself. Again. She wants to know, do you need any formal training to operate an arrowboat? Uh, no. Yes. No, no you no. don't. No, you don't. <laughs> Although it's a good idea to. You can take an RYA helmsman course. It should be helms person, really, it? should be, it? really. Helmsman course, usually over a weekend. And it's a nice weekend because you get to play out on a narrowboat yeah. and somebody teaches you how to use it. It's really helpful. There's a quite a few places in Britain that do that. Although if you're just hiring a boat for a holiday, they'll usually give you some basic instruction on how to drive the boat and use locks and swing bridges. And it is basic. Uh, it is a good idea to do the proper training if you're thinking about living on one or taking it out on like an extended holiday, isn't it? Yeah. If you want more information, if you've never used a narrowboat before and want information on starting to on the basics uh, there's uh, a good page on the canal and river trust website i'll put a link down in the video description next question is from andy ford he wants to know when you live on a boat even the guys, is it better to have sit down wheeze because of the rocking motion? <laughs> yes. It is for a couple of reasons. Yeah, it does rock about. And what you tend to do is, when you first move on a boat, every time you get off it and you stood in a queue somewhere, you do tend to rock gently like that, even though you're not moving. We always rock in different things, don't we? How many times have we practiced this? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, for us, the type of toilet we have, it's better to sit down because it stops the splash back. Yeah, it well, does, yeah. It? If you've got the sun coming through the window, you get a rainbow. <laughs> Well, that's because you pee like a racehorse, you. <laughs> so, uh, it's like... <laughs> Next.
next question is from John Morris. Didn't he do animal magic? Johnny Morris? Yeah. He wants to know, how do you deal with privacy issues when you moor up? He's got a good point because essentially we're living on a public footpath. Yeah. Aren't we? Yeah. And it shows sometimes, depending on where you're moored, we try and get to moor in the quietest places where you don't see a lot of people. You're never going to have total privacy. Well, no. I mean, we have once or twice. Once or twice we've found spots where you don't see anybody. And that's really nice because you can sit out and just have the place to yourself. Yes. But sometimes you've just got to accept that people are going to be walking about. And it's actually nice to have people to say hello to sometimes. It, it is sometimes, yeah. Ellen and Nick Jones want to know, do we ever feel unsafe on the boat? I don't. I don't. I have a guardrail around the bed. <laughs> you know, Stop me falling off. Stop me falling out. No, it's never that bad. Uh, in, in all honesty, I get edgy when I hear noises. Uh, especially at three o'clock in the morning when I get, what's that noise? <laughs> but there's never been any reason for us to feel unsafe. No. Uh, apart from a boat crashing through the galley window one day. That was an accident, but we've never been... Uh, like targeted maliciously, have we? Any damage to the boat or anything like that? No, not on purpose, no. So, short answer, no, but it depends how nervous you are as a person. I'm quite edgy, so if we're in a place I don't know, I'll be a little bit more edgy, but he's like totally Mr. Chilled, so nothing <laughs> bothers him at all. Yes. When the boat crashed through the window, he didn't even spill his wine, did you? No. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Next question comes from Sally Lloyd. She wants to know what it's like taking a shower when the boat's moving. Oh, it's easy. It is for you because I always stay still. <laughs> Whenever I get in the shower, I'll get lathered up and I'll have my foot in my hand, cleaning in between my toes and he'll get up and start moving about. No, no, no. Yes, yes, I'm no. sorry. When you go into the shower, you'll say, while I'm in the shower, can you do this or this or this? I've got to do that from sitting on the you sofa. Can smell it from here. Can you? You, can, you can smell it. Yeah, he does tend to move about. If so, if someone moves about while you're in a compromising position with shampoo in your face and your foot in your hands and you're trying to clean yourself, then yes, you can take a tumble sometimes. <laughs> Two questions to go and it's a good job because we're nearly where we're going. Yes. Next one is from Annie Pretty. She wants to know just how bad the spider situation is on the boat. Well, we've uh, never had a spider situation. We have, no, we haven't, have we? You do tend to get more spiders coming in during the autumn months, don't you? Late summer and the, it's like, oh, it's getting a bit chilly now. Let's go find that boat, that nice silver one yeah. and scare Colin to death. So we do tend to get a few spiders, but no more, I don't think, than you'd get in a house. No, uh, no, I don't think we have. And it depends where you're moored. If you're moored where there's a lot of grass encroaching onto the boat, you're going to get more bugs and stuff crawling up the grass onto your boat. Yeah. Because of the nice smell of cake that we have. How <laughs> do spiders like cake? I won't give them a chance. <laughs> Final question. Ta da! Yay! We do with a fanfare, couldn't we? We could. It's from a friend of mine who doesn't want me to say his real name, so we're going to change it from John to John Prince. <laughs> Ta da! Uh, he wants to know do people ever go up through your windows? Uh, yeah. yeah. All the time. All the time. Because we've got blacked out windows, we can see out, but people can't see in. And they come right up like that. <laughs> don't they? they do. I used to moon at them yeah. because I don't wear much clothes a lot of the time and I used to moon at them until one day Sean had actually taken the galley window out and not told me. <laughs> no, that didn't happen. 
Uh, but yeah, people are people are nosy, but people are, it's because they're interested. Yeah. And it's an interesting lifestyle. So people want to know, and we get a lot of people stopping and looking at the boat, and if one of us is outside, they'll start chatting about the boat and the solar panels and, and the lifestyle. Yeah. So don't ever not be interested. Just don't stick your head in the window when it's open and I'm in the shower and you might see something you don't want to see. <laughs> Hopefully, we've answered some questions, awkward or embarrassing questions, that you might have about living on a narrowboat if you're thinking about it. The best thing you can do if you're considering it is to go and try it. The hire boats are going to be out soon again. Yeah. So it's going to be a busy year for them. I it think. is. But try it out and try it a couple of times on different canals. Don't just buy a boat without trying it first because some people don't adjust to the lifestyle very well and it's a pretty big investment to waste if you don't like it. It's a big change of life. Yeah, we regret it. <laughs> no, we don't. No, we don't, honestly. We love it, as you can see. Uh, we hope you've loved this vlog. If you have and you're not already, subscribe to the channel because we've got so much to offer apart from this rubbish. <laughs> Uh, uh, click the like button if you've enjoyed the vlog and if you hit the notifications bell YouTube will let you know every time we release a new episode which is four o'clock every Friday in the UK and you should know that by now if you want to help support the channel because we do this for nothing yeah. if you want to help support the channel so you can keep us in production and keep maybe get the content quality a bit higher it needs to be. Yeah, you can become a member of the channel. Click the join button on our home page or on this vlog page. There's a join button next to the subscribe button. Or you can do it on Patreon. There's a link up above Sean's head. Click that if you're on a smartphone or a computer and that will take you through to Patreon. Join us next time. And in the meantime, take care of yourselves. See you next week. Bye-bye. Ta-da! Good morning. Morning. And welcome to Engines. Do you know what? I can't get good King Wenceslas out of my head this morning. The song, not the king. Well, you're watching this in March. It might have been recorded last October, the way things are going at the moment. We don't know, do we? <laughs> Sean was giving the camera the finger on our, so on our, on our social media. Ha, 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 ha. We're going to do it again. First question is from Pete Rubbers. And it's a real name. It is a real name. And uh, might not be. As long as you give them enough instructions uh, in this. In NIF instructions, in NIF. What am I talking like there? I would, I, in NIF. I would say there's several apps where you can do that. NIF, NIF. Watch where you're going. <laughs> Watch you where I'm going. <laughs> that's a bit weird, isn't it? No, let's have a nosy what's going on here first. I, I like a man in a skirt. <laughs> I think I get that off me dad. <laughs> she says, Forgotten. Lots of sirens in this area. Come to the big forest, he said. It's lovely and quiet, he said. Yay! Whew. Hello, Mrs. Duck. Are you on your own? And Sean will get up and go into the gill gi gilly. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be able to move in a couple of weeks, which is good for us. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've got somebody photo bombing us. <laughs>